What's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. Got a 17 Elantra just came in. Uh, the customer states that she was driving along, the check engine light came on. She said it doesn't appear to have a misfire or running rough or anything like that. It just came on and she just wants to make sure there's nothing dangerous. So first let's confirm that the light is on. Got the car running. Check engine light is definitely on. Um, don't feel a misfire. All right, let's throw the scanner on this thing and let's see what kind of codes we got. The OBD2 connector on this car is located right behind that panel. Made it pretty accessible. All right, let's power her on. Let's see what we got. Okie dokie. Uh, go to the scanner. Do you want to load a 17 Elantra? Yes, I do. 17 Launcher 2.0. Hit OK. We'll do a code scan. Let's do a pre scan. OK. So far, the Zeus has been pretty decent. I haven't had no complaints about it. It's pretty fast. The last one I had was super slow. I spoke too soon. Freaking no communication with the device down here. So let's back out. So just want to open my mouth. I lost connection, but it popped back on, so we're good to go. Jinx myself is what I did. Right off the bat, I see it's a it's a uh, crankshaft position, camshaft position correlation. Bank one sensor B on the exhaust side. You know, I've seen these a lot on these cars. Normally, it's just that sensor that goes bad. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and hit diagnose. Let's just skip on over. I'm in Intelligent Diagnostics, and what it's telling me is the top repair at about 100,000 miles, and we're sitting at 120 on this car, is replace the variable timing control valve. So let's go into real quick, let's just go into smart data and let's look at that. Let's see if it red flags anything. Let's see, intake air is 133, wheel speed is zero, uh, current position of the cam is 128, control cam bank one is 128, position of the cam is a negative 118, position of the exhaust one is negative 114, holding pulse is 0.5, the percent on the holding pulse and the width is 45, Let's go back one. Let's go in the uh, functional procedures here. Let's go in the oil control valve on the exhaust side. Engine off, key on, we are there. Let's collect some data. One of the things says, customer states check engine light is on. Connected a scan tool and found code P0014, the B camshaft position. Timing over advanced or system performance bank one and P0017, crankshaft position, camshaft position, coloration, bank one, sensor B, performed a road test while monitoring live scan data and observed that the variable value timing control solenoid perimeter intermittently dropped out. Detected of the variable valve timing control solenoid wiring harness and connector, but detected no obvious faults. With the ignition on and engine off using multimeter, check the presence of voltage and ground at the variable valve timing control solenoid connector and found both were present. Using a set of fused jumper wires, applied voltage and ground to the variable valve timing valve solenoid and found the solenoid did not respond. Indicated the variable valve timing control solenoid was faulty and the correction to replace the valve. So after reading this, what I'm gonna do is go out there to the valve and I'll check for battery voltage and ground at the connector. If that looks good, I'll go ahead and apply battery voltage and ground to the solenoid and make sure that it's working correctly. Like I said before, I've seen it hundreds of times on these cars. Most likely it's just that valve, but we're gonna verify it anyway. Your variable valve solenoids are located, this is your intake one right here, and this is your exhaust one right here. This is the one given the code. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off and check and see which wire is power and ground. First, let me go ahead and pull a schematic on it and make sure I probe the right wires. All right, Cox cable is killing me. Uh, they're working on the freaking internet again around here. They have been working on it, it seems like, every time I go to get into a computer. Killing me. Anyway, this is the valve we're looking... Shit, you bastard. Right here. This is the valve we're looking for. It's on the right side of the engine compartment. It's a yellow and an orange wire. So, what we need to do is... Let's follow the yellow and orange wire and let's see where they go.
Orange wire goes into number six. Number six is right here, and number six goes into. Hold on a second here. Let's make sure I'm telling you right. Let's see. Number six is the orange wire coming out. Orange wire taps into a pink wire. Pink wire goes into number six. Coming across. Number six is the pink wire right here. This is gonna be your hot wire. So the orange wire is gonna be the hot wire. And the other one's gonna be your ground. Yellow wires, trace the yellow wire down. Yellow wire goes into 17 turns into 20. 20 is your, oh shit, right there. CVVT number two. So looking at the schematic, the orange wire is gonna be your 12 volts. The yellow wire is gonna be your ground wire. What happens is the computer sends a ground signal to that valve and commands it off and on. So with the key on, let's pop that clip off and let's check to see if we have, at least have 12 volts right now going to there. All right, I got my meter hooked up and we should have 12 volts going to the orange wire and 12.14. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and hook a ground and a hot side to this and let's see, can I activate the sun away and feel it click off and on? So let's get some jumper leads hooked in here. Here, get one on this side. Put the black on the ground side. Now, when I make sure when you do this, you check it. This plugs in this way. The orange one is to the left. The ground side, the control wire is to the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hook up the hot side. All I'm going to do is just tap it off and on. So I've got the ground side, I've got the hot side hooked up, and I'm going to take this lead right here, and we'll just tap it off and on and see can I feel something on this solenoid. Shit, it's hot. Oh. You mother. Testing one, two, three, you mother. All right, so I've got my wires hooked up. I've got the black lead going to the ground side. I've got the red side going to the positive side of the sensor. And when I was checking it earlier, I was clicking it off and on, and I wasn't feeling anything clicking on that valve because you should be able to feel the valve click. So what I did was I stuck it here for a minute, and then I kind of going, started going really fast, and then I started feeling the valve move a little bit. So I got a feeling that there was some sludge up in there, and it was just like maybe stuck open or stuck closed. And by me doing this, it kind of broke it loose. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that valve. You're just gonna have to trust me that me doing this unstuck that valve. Let me get some parts ordered, let the engine cool down. We'll take it apart and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, we just got the part in. It is a Dorman number 918033. It's held on with one 10 millimeter. This is what it looks like right here. So those of you who watched my last video know that I lost my knife in that car and I just had a birthday recently. I just turned 38 years old and um, my wife got me another knife exactly like it. Cannot believe I lost that knife. That's what it looks like, just like this. And like I say, a lot of times they get gummed up inside here and this valve will stick and not let it operate correctly. All right, let's get it on the car. Let me get you set up over here. All on the skill level, this is probably gonna be about a two. It is not hard at all. This is something that's very doable at home. Ready? Sometimes they don't slide right out. Just get a screwdriver, reach down in here and just kind of pry it very gingerly. 
kind of twist and pry at the same time. It'll come, you just gotta be patient with it. And once it gets past that little point, she'll slide right out. I say she'll slide right out. Get the new one, slide it in. Just kind of reverse procedure when you go to slide it in. So on a side note, those of you who have been following my channel a while, uh, surgery on my shoulder, I was released after about three and a half months. I was super stoked. I could not believe I recovered that fast because it was supposed to be a five month recovery. Let's get it plugged back up. Let's get the scanner hooked up to it. Let's clear the code and take it for a ride. So I went into resets and relearns and go down here. When you replace the variable timing control solenoid, you have to relearn it. There's a start and stop function up here. If you look right here, the OVC holding pulse width on the exhaust side for the CVD option. Right now it's at 5.4. And if I activate it, it should pulse off and on to 100%. That means it does work correctly. Now let's go ahead and go for our test drive and we'll make sure that light don't come back on. So we've been driving now for about five or 10 minutes. The readings on the computer look good. There's no check engine light. Everything seems to be doing good. And what that means is this job is done. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.